Since we're sailing in so close to a rocky and nasty jetty, we left the engine running at idle to get us out of any trouble, like having the wind quit. The sails are strapped in tight to lean the boat way over to expose the windward rudder and part of the dagger board. With the boat heeled over like this, the other rudder is deep in the water and working well. On a boat with just one centerline rudder, if the boat heels over too much, control can be lost. This is the big racing spinnaker set on a long removable bowsprit. It has a lot of power and can drive the boat at planing speeds. Jibing the racing spinnaker is easy. There's so much gap between the front of the sail, the tip of the bowsprit, and the boat's forward permanent headstay, the sail just passes right through on its way to the other side. This is the boat sailing close into the wind with the big chute. This is the small cruising spinnaker. It fastens to the nose of the boat and not to the end of the long bow spring. It tacks and jibes just like a Genoa. The boat here is really moving. Notice a smooth, clean wake. Sailing across the wind or downwind, it adds a lot of speed. No extra hardware is required for this sail. The boat is sailing with just the mainsail. With the rotating catamaran style mast, the mainsail alone is far more effective than it would be with a conventional mast. This rig is perfect for high winds, learning to sail, or for just lazy sailing. This is where the rotating mast pays off big time. The 26 can easily be tacked with just the mainsail. The mainsail powers up quickly on the new course and the boat's on its way. When the wind increases, we roll the jib or Genoa up on the furler. The furling line leads back to the cockpit. In heavier wind, the boat's moving along nicely with a reefed main and partially rolled Genoa. In strong winds with reduced sail area, it'll be faster, easier to sail. This is the reefed main at a nearly full Genoa. In New Zealand, the boat is sailing just with the Genoa. And now we go fast. All this is being done with a light, quiet, and fuel-efficient 50-horsepower outboard motor. We limited the engine to 50 horsepower for a number of reasons. An electric start 50 provides a lot of speed, yet it's light enough so that sailing performance is not compromised. It's about the largest engine that can be started by hand, a nice feature if your battery goes dead. Over the years, there have been many attempts to make a good combination power boat and sailboat. Most have been failures because they were too heavy or had unsuitable hull shapes. There's absolute proof that it can be done without compromising sailing or powering. And here it comes. The 26 has two engines, the sails and the motor. If a conventional power boat's engine quits when you're offshore or on a remote part of the lake, you're stuck there until outside help arrives. With this boat, raise the sails and head for home. This is Catalina Island, 20 miles off California's coast. In the background is St. Anthony's Lighthouse, marking the entrance to England's Falmouth Harbor.
New Zealand again. And back to Catalina. The new 26M is slightly faster than our prior 26X. Both boats have identical engines and carry the same weight. The new boat's in the foreground. This is a drag race. The older boat jumps up on a plane a bit more quickly, but the newer boat slowly pulls ahead. The McGregor 70 may be faster under sail, but it's no contest under power. The 70 is going 13 miles per hour, fast for a sailboat, and the 26 zooms right on by. The 26 is not as fast as this one. Or this one. Back to reality. And now for water skiing. You can't do this with other sailboats. Sometimes launches go well. And sometimes they don't. A single ski works pretty well. As does a wakeboard. The boarding ladder makes getting in and out easy. The ladder's retracted, and the captain's seat is closed. You can drag the kids around on just about anything. We drilled a hole in the bottom and let it fill. The solid foam flotation keeps it afloat. Most boats of this size do not offer this essential safety feature, and their heavy keels can pull them straight to the bottom if they're damaged or flooded. With the water tank full and my 180 pounds on the rail, there's very little tipping. With other boats, you'll see some really serious tipping when loaded like this. With the water tank full, we pull the boat over on its side. It takes about 130 pounds at the top of the mast to hold it down like this. When the mast is released, it rights itself in about one second. The mast is sealed to help prevent a complete rollover. Engines can quit. For a boat without sails, here's one solution. Embarrassing, but a solution. With sails, you can get home, or you can just paddle.